Alright, so I'm gonna fill you guys in on the uh, pre bug build for Bruce Chapman. Carter's in there grinding away right now, making an exhaust bracket. Wearing eye protection and ear protection, of course. Um, so while he's doing that, since it's noisy, I'm gonna go over a couple things with my twin just to kill some time. This has been a giant nightmare, um, but I'm destined to put it together. I've had a couple air leaks, I've had DEFCON leaks, um, it's just been a pain in the rear. So I think what may have happened with this is in the center, in the center section, there's a billet center that holds that crank in. Um, I sent that out to Italy, I had it all replaced, they rebuilt it because they're the ones that manufacture it, put it together, and they're the only ones that know how to or have the proper tooling and jig and whatnot to pull out apart. So my thought is it's possible when they replace that center section, they made it bigger than before. And so now when it goes to the two pieces clamp it together, um, I don't think it's getting a good seal because I think that center section is bigger than the previous one, therefore it's having a hard time sealing. Uh, that being said, I'm really aggravated with it. So what I may do is I may try to get that 200 going. I don't have a chassis to put that in yet. Um, so that's why I want to get that one going. That drops right in the Zoom 125. But uh, anyways, so I had some issues with the Debcon sealing and my leak right now is right in the center, uh, center block in a seam. And it's torqued down, it's Honda bonded. And the only thing that makes sense is that the, uh, the billet tube in the center that, that holds the cranks, it gets pinched down between the, the two billet halves is larger and it's not fitting right. So if that's the case, in order to make it fit right, I had to take it all apart, take the center blocks in and have the center blocks machined out perfectly to still pinch on the, on the center carrier, um, but also not to uh, be too large to where it'll spin around. So it's, that, is, that will take a lot of time. But that's what I suspect is going on with it. That being said, if anybody thinks you can just slap a twin together, I've seen guys say, oh, they just have fast bikes because they put big CC whatever. That is not true. That thing is a pain in the rear and it's a lot of work. Just getting into the stage it's at now, um, I, it's probably, I probably have 25 hours into just getting it to this stage. Um, and that's not, that's, that's when I had all the parts sitting on my bench and then putting it together, take it apart, put it together, take it apart. Every time you have an air leak, you have to take the whole motor down to nothing and then clean it. So, but anyways, enough about that. All right, Carter, I'm gonna show him the, the bike. So, um, Bruce Chapman's pre-bug. Um, again, you guys know it has a big Evo 94. So you've got the MVT ignition fitted up here. Uh, we had to flip around the intake manifold with the MXS. And now we have the stage six intake on here to clear. Um, went down to a Pelini 30 because this intake design does not allow for a 35 that was on it before. So he gets a new carb. This filters, stage six. Um, we sell these specifically for Zumas that have these 90s on them because uh, you can't buy them. That way the tip woods come with a straight piece. So the big pain in the deal for this was the, the fairing kit, which are these guys down here. So. Just set it up here. That. So that's how that sits. And then we have the underbelly for it too. So the back half of the frame has to be cut off when you run the BCD fairings. Um, and the seat and everything will fit on here as well. But let me show you guys kind of what needs to be done and what the hurdle was. Let's set this down here, nice and gentle. So when we did this, we had the wider wheel. So normally you could just bolt this mount on here, but since the wheel's wider, it, the, mo the motor offset this way a little bit. So um, had this, this fabbed up here to push the, the shock out a little bit to make sure it's straight. Had to cut both the ends of the frame off here. Had to fab this guy for the seat to sit flush. Uh, down here, um, this section had to be cut out on here because this is where the battery sits or the, if you want your battery to go down here, that's where, you're, that's where you would have to cut out. Um, so we ran the coolant lines all the way up here. And right now we're in the stages of trying to find the right radiator. Um, this bike has front, front and rear disc brakes, of course. It's got the Pliny, um, Pliny gauge. So also with the BCD fairing kit, and again, this is rear disc. We have these custom brake lines made here. They do a really good job. Oil filter services kills it. So this bike starts um, second kick, fires right up. So. Uh, Carter's fabbing up a custom exhaust bracket right now over there because uh, there is nothing to make this fit due to this angle. So um, again, this is a used engine. This is my big Evo motor out of my uh, Malaguti and it's 
really fast. It's tried and true. This, this motor is just a killer. It did go down once, so it's got a dent right here in the pipe, um, but they're not even making these pipes anymore for Minarelli. So if you guys buy a Big Eagle 94 kit, you cannot get the pipes for these. They are discontinued. So um, wheels from Machine Machines, the tires on, um, and then on the front also what had to be changed is uh, the ignition had to be modified and moved. We had a, there was a tab welded on here, these brackets here for the fairings, and then um, on the front, we actually had to put it on a lower profile tire because this one rubs on the fairings. So um, that's where we're at. It starts, it runs, the ignition's on. Clear. You think, think so? Clear. Yeah. yeah, it'd be nice. And see why quick throttle. Um, yeah, it runs. So uh, the next step is the radiator. Put the fairings on, the tire, wire up the tail light in the back. So as you see, Carter's trying a bunch of different options with pipe brackets and bits and pieces and whatnot hand filing over here, good old fashioned hand labor. It's all the little stuff no one thinks about, like when you do a wide tire, it doesn't just make the exhaust go to the right, it has to shift so it's going to the right and forward. So none of your brackets line up, none of that stuff. Yeah. So something to consider, that goes for GY6 too. Yeah, it's- or, Yeah, or whatever, anything you're doing a wide tire on. Well, had this been a skinny tire, this bracket would have bolted, bolted right up. Right yeah, so, um, so yeah, this is, it's, we're pretty close. I mean, it's- It actually is, if that radiator fits, I could drive it today. That would be sweet. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's close, so we're talking about doing the the uh, radiator up here behind the, the, in the headlight section, essentially, so. Euro. Yeah. So this is where it rubs right here in the front, so we're gonna put a lower profile in the, in the front, hope that that clears. If it doesn't, we're gonna have to go with different forks that shift the wheel back, which we don't really wanna do. So, um, again, uh, nice brake lines, nice stainless brake lines, uh, NCY flat bars, fresh battery, mounts all welded or put together. Uh, it's got the big Evo cover. This is this bike should do 95 or something like that. Should get there quick. So, um, so yeah, that's getting close. Larry came in and brought in a really sweet jog. Rode that around last night. Uh, we got absolutely dumped on in the rain. Carter's got his Dio going. That thing is pretty sweet. Sim headset. So he has too fast pipe on that, and this bike does 55 with just a stock bore and a too fast. Um, just some other bikes. We got David Strom's pre bug done, big bore kit, some other stuff. Uh, I got my bike running. I think that's it. There's a Pruly SR50 out here too. We just did big bore kit on this. A Pruly SR50. That's a really sweet little bike. Um, just some low C big bore kit, nothing else. Uh, of course, we got the OG Gangster CV80. Somebody tried to buy that from us yesterday, and we told them no because we got it for free. And it's, just too dorky to sell. Um, this is a local Zuma that came in. He just bought it and found out somebody put gear oil in the, um, the two-stroke bottle back there. So that's obviously got to get emptied, um, emptied and drained and fixed. So that's good. Um, what else do we have here? Since we're here, the uh, Dallas Raz sold. Um, I forget where the guy lives, but Dallin's Raz sold the Elites for sale. I don't really push it that much, but so his uh, Dio swapped Raz. Um, you guys have seen this before, I think. Um, he just sold it, got it done, just sold it. This is a really quick, super, super sweet build. Um, he did a lot of the work and then brought it in and we finished it all up. But yeah, Trill Tech, Temp Gauge. But yeah, it turned out really, really nice. So uh, got the JDM tail, Yasuni. Exhaust and the full 72 cc Dio ported Corsa everything. So this bike sold. I think it sold for two or 2,500 something like that um, But that's sweet the guy's leaving it here because he's gonna ship us a bunch of bikes to modify uh, My Dio again. I have not touched it at all Sister-in-law's Honda Arrow um, I need to go through and freshen up. He's ready to ride it and then wife's Baja of course always runs perfect starts every time never have to mess with that thing at all so elite 250 if anybody wants this this guy's for sale too that's a 85 90 mile an hour bike it's been bored out to a 290 melosi cam um melosi cam full cvt and all that good stuff that's like riding around a big block scooter so um all right well i think that's it we're gonna i'm going to try to if i don't throw this twin out the window and break it into a thousand pieces um it should be hopefully i'm gonna test it in a couple hours and and if it's it sucks, but it is what it is. Hope they can get that thing dialed uh, soon. I have some, um, I have a C1 motor, Melosi C1 motor that's gotta get put together for Barber. 
Um, but I have, if you guys want, we have a bunch of race engines here that just landed t today from Melosi 94 CC RC1 cases um, as well. So uh, your RC1 cases are going to be the same as these cases. Um, if you want to do something like a two fast motor, these are your RC1 cases. So obviously you just get this piece and this piece and you can machine them out to fit the 100. So when you guys buy the, um, and we have a bunch of videos, but when you buy the full, the, just the cases, you get the two cases, you get bearings, you get seals, you get an intake manifold, you get their uh, reed cage, you get a bunch of stuff. So it's like uh, most stores sell it for 550 or something like that. We have it for 519 shipped and it's a really, really, really killer deal. Um, if you're looking to do a big build, a big CC build, if you want to take, so perfect example, this one, these are OEM cases, right? I wanted to start with OEM cases, untouched. I paid $500 for OEM cases because I had to buy a whole motor. And then you pay whatever to have the machine work done. And then you buy the bearings, then you buy the seals. Um, all your dowels, your pins, your bushings, all that stuff. That is cheaper than doing OEM cases. People think 519 bucks up front for cases, um, but they don't do the math on your machine work. Um, you're cleaning. When you have an OEM old case, you have stripped threads. You may have things that aren't true. You may have flaws or scratches, whatever, in, in maybe in sealing surfaces. You do RC1 motor, it's brand new, it's fresh. Um, you could just bolt it together and go, no machine work, it's all new. So every bolt, every seal, every little part all adds up. So, um, so yeah, also, I think that's it. Just seeing if we had anything else exciting up here. Um, I don't remember whose crank that is, but more carnage in the carnage cabinet. But here's uh, Bruce's tire. It's going to go on his bike. So um, hopefully Monday, Friday, Monday, we'll have another video of the bike kind of more together. Um, the big challenge with that was the fairings. The fairings were huge. If the fairings were still OEM, that bike would have been done probably three, four weeks ago. Uh, but it's going to look really cool. The fairings are not. That's the only one in the United States that's rocking those fairings. It's going to be on the right. Um, it's going to be fast. It's going to have billet wheels. So that, hands down, is going to be the only bike um, in the United States that's like that. I think it's the only pre-bug running horizontal with the billet wheels too. So um, thank you, Bruce, for letting us do that and uh, trusting us with your bike. And uh, have a good day. Wish me luck with this turd. If you see me smashing it with the sledgehammer, well, hopefully I don't. But anyways, have a good day. Thanks for watching. Share, subscribe, and uh, you'll see some new videos soon. Thanks, guys.